It makes it spicy, it's like a seasoning, it's brilliant. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, I should explain. Um, for any British people in, seasoning is something that we use to kind of just like um, <laughs> flavor food. How are you guys, you guys good? Yeah. Amazing, hi, hello. My name is Sharon because of colonization and it's nice to be here. Listen, I, um, I've been struggling with something as of later. I've been struggling with my religious identity. And it's weird because if someone asks me if I'm religious, I'll say no, I'll say no. But I still believe in a God, of course I still believe in a God because how else do you explain Idris Elba? There's actually no other way <laughs> to explain him, is there? And I was raised Catholic, which, <sighs> Any other ex-Catholics in tonight? <laughs> that shit you up, doesn't it? <laughs> Would you say that? And I've been having this debate with my friends. Doesn't it make sex so much more interesting? <laughs> it does. Are you kidding me? The guilt and the shame? <sighs> it makes it spicy. It's like a seasoning. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I should explain. Um, for any British people in, seasoning is something that we use to kind of just like um, <laughs> flavor food. No, it's, it's weird because even though I find myself moving away from my religious identity, there are parts of it that I really miss that I never thought in a million years I'd miss, like a proper miss church. I do. I miss things like the community aspect, things like the free wine, <laughs> things like, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, the gossip. <laughs> gossip in church, are you kidding me? My favorite thing to this day is when the person leading the prayer would find a way to put the gossip in the prayer. What? And it would always start off so innocent as well. But at church, we have gathered here to celebrate the life of baby Joe, born on Thursday and already so healthy. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Father Jesus, we want to thank you for the life of baby Joe. We know he was born out of wedlock. Mm. <laughs> But we know he shall not perish because you are forgiving God, amen. Thank you for baby Joe's beautiful eyes in which he can see, his beautiful ears in which he can hear, Father Lord, and his beautiful nose that looks a lot like the father's brothers. No comment, hallelujah. No comment, hallelujah. Mm. I also want to use this prayer, God, to thank you for the rest of the congregation, for Sister Mary, who every week turns up in those pretty little thing dresses, knowing she's neither pretty nor little Father God, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Mm, mm. Finally, Father, this prayer would not be complete if I did not thank you for Brother Christian and Sister Emily. How they both work full time and claim benefits is a miracle, Father Lord. <laughs> It's a miracle. Or me and my church besties, we'd always laugh because it's ridiculous, isn't it? It's supposed to be a serious moment of prayer and reflection and we're hearing all of this scandalous gossip. And then I remember something changed one day. Something changed. We stopped laughing, right? We're praying over a newborn baby, business as usual, and the person leading the prayer finished it by saying, and I quote, and I pray against the spirit of lesbianity. I know, right? And I remember feeling so conflicted at the time, because I'm not going to lie to you guys. When you grow up in an environment like that, you get used to hearing homophobic things. But I remember this one particular comment. It made me so unbelievably upset. And I didn't understand why for many years. This one comment made me so upset. And I woke up one day and I was like, oh, I'm the spirit of lesbianity. <laughs> guys, I was gay the whole time. <laughs> what a plot twist. <laughs> No one saw that one coming. It's nuts! Do you know, growing up, right, I never identified as gay. I never saw myself as a gay woman because I just loved women. Even outside of my sexuality, I think we're amazing, right? I, we are so supportive, even when we don't need to be. I went out for drinks with the girls last night, right? I was trying on a new dress I bought online. I was looking in the mirror, I was like, mm, do, you know what? do you know what, girls? I'm not feeling this one. I thought, it's a bit too short at the front. And they come in straight away, no hesitation. Wait, turn around, babe. Let me see the back, babe. Turn this side, darling. Do you know what? It's perfect, because your pubes, they match your earrings, darling. It's high fashion, like, <laughs> where else do you get that level of support? I love us. I do. No, I do. It's fun, man. I'm learning a lot now that I'm out, especially about relationships, right? And something that I didn't really expect, and something I feel like we don't really talk about as a society, is how you can date someone for a really long time, and then it's like the day you break up, they turn into a completely different person, right? Has anyone had this happen to them? Just me? Cool, no, that's fine, that's fine, that's great for our mental health. I wanna read out this text message. Right, do you guys wanna hear it? Yeah. All right, okay, um, just imagine, just imagine, you've been dating someone for years and years and years, and this is the text you receive when you break up. 
hey, bitch. <laughs> Just wanted to let you know that even though we both have vaginas, I was on birth control the entire time because the thought of conceiving your LGBT miracle baby made me and still makes me want to swallow razor blades. P.S. I still love you. Please, please come back. I can't live without you. <laughs> no, I know. I know. I know. Anyway, she never responded, so I've taken that as my sign to move on because <laughs> what else can you do? You guys have been so much fun. I've been Sharon Joe. He love you. Love you. Mwah, 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 mwah.